Hey everybody, this is Hercules Pedix founder, curator, docent, and gift shop employee of the Hercules Pedix Academy of Comic Book Studies. Today we're going to uh, look at um, three obscure, kind of oddball comics, um, all by Jim Woodring. So this is like a Jim Woodring triple feature of uh, odds and ends. Uh, most people probably don't even know these comics exist. I don't know where I happen to find these two. These are like educational kid comics that he did in the 90s. Yeah, so all these were done in the 90s. All of them are written by Scott DeShane. And um, and Jim Woodring draws them. So I guess this is kind of work for hire stuff Jim Woodring did. Where uh, Scott DeShane needed an artist and he got Jim Woodring to draw it. So let's look at the first one here. I'm going in like order, chronological order. I think this is 1992. Blue Block, written by Scott DeShane, drawn by Jim Woodring. This was uh, published by Kitchen Sing Press. This is a really interesting, weird comic. I uh, Just pretty bizarro. It's kind of science fiction. It's a really, Jim Woodring really draws cats well. They're cute, but they're also frightening, how some cats can be. And this is colored by his wife, Mary Woodring. Really interesting colors. So we see this kind of future, I guess somewhere in the near future. And uh, there's this cat running around, a stray cat. And I guess there's just a food distribution center in this city and uh this cat is following this kid home and uh some guy has a net and nets the cat and the cat just looks at him like homie don't play that and uh just jumps out of the net and attacks the guy so then the cat keeps following the kid the kid uh sees his dad here And he notices that the cat has followed it home. So he says, hey dad, they're putting the food in blue boxes now. And uh, the father says, blue skies all day, blue skies all night. I kind of like all this blue, don't you kiddo? And uh, the son says, but I thought you cussed when those stupid lights went up. So I guess this whole city is like, for some reason, is illuminated with these blue lights all the time. So it's never dark. And the father gives the cat some of uh, his milk. The last remains of his milk, he just rolls the bottle over to the cat so he can drink it. And the cat shoves his face in the bottle to get the dregs. And he puts it up against the wall so he can really shove his face in. But then the cat realizes he's stuck in the bottle. And the father runs to help him. And the cat scratches him, he's panicking. And when the bottle, uh, when he falls, the bottle breaks. So he's got this dangerous ring of glass around him. <coughs> Excuse me. God, look at the way Jim Woodery draws him. It's terrifying. So the cat runs off. Then we see these three guys who work for the the government, I guess. They're from Human Services in their little government vehicle. And when the father sees the ship coming towards their house, his house, he says, who sent for them? And 
it looks like his daughter says, Daddy, she won't make it without help. And these guys come in. And just by the way they're drawn, you can tell that they're not um, good guys. So I guess they deliver this woman's son. But the father and the daughter are just like, like, like it's something oppressive. And for the baby's got a little tail and they snip it off. So the baby's okay. It's just a little drugged from the drugs they use. So the, the wife, uh, the mother says, we should never have, and then she kind of passes out. So it's just very nebulous, like what's going on in this world. I don't quite understand it. So one day, uh, or a little later on, the father's like standing on a stoop and he sees across the alley, he sees that cat. He's still got that glass thing around his neck. God, that's such a good panel. Jim Woodring could do anything. Later on, we see the father, he's got a backpack. He's climbing up this tower. It looks like all these electrical lines are coming from it, emanating from it. And he's got a bomb in the backpack. It's uh, got a timer on it, so he sets it up. And as he's climbing back down this tower, one of the official government vehicles shows up. And he leaps from the from the ladder. And the bomb goes off. That's pretty spectacular. You often don't see Jim Woodring drawing explosions. Because his uh, Frank comic is very gentle. I guess I should have mentioned, I, I kind of assumed everyone knows Jim Woodring, but, you know, Jim Woodring is the, one of the best cartoonists in the world, uh, created Frank. He had his Jim comic for a long time. That's how he started off with Fantagraphics, and then he developed his Frank character and the world of characters. And that's pretty much what he's been doing for three, four decades. So it's really weird, like, finding a weird oddball thing like this. This was in uh, quarter bins all through the 90s. So the explosion dies down. The father is uh, kind of thrown into this park unconscious. And who should show up but that cat with the glass bottleneck thing around his around him and the father grabs the cat he wasn't really unconscious he looks mad here look at his face <laughs> the cat's terrified Jim Woodring captures cats so well like their expressions and even though you know this is like kind of cartoony but then just, I know this sounds silly, but just look how well drawn that hand is. It's just a hand, right? Not doing much. But he's such a good artist. He could have just drawn that cartoony like everyone else has drawn. So uh, the father picks up a rock and he has the cat's paw in his hand. Then we cut away. And um, the explosion caused all the blue lights to go out. So for the first time in whoever, who knows how long, people can see the stars. It's actually like dark, like it should be at night. And we see the, the family that we were introduced to and they kind of like it. They're like, wow, let's pretend we're camping in the woods. 
Now we cut back to the father. And the father very deftly uses the rock to just shatter the, the glass thing around the cat's neck without hurting the cat. And Mary Woodring's a really good colorist. Some nice stuff. And so then the father, I guess, runs home and the cat runs away. <laughs> That's the end. Such an odd little story. It's um, well, barely a story. Very weird. Here's a little ad to show you other things that Scott DeShane has written with uh, other artists and some of Jim Woodring's famous comics. This is roughly at the beginning of Jim Woodring's career. He, had, he hadn't been around that long. Oh man, this is a nice one. Um, if it still is in dollar bins, I doubt it. You should check it out. Okay, so here's Smokey Bear, Friend of the Forest. This is from 1997. This is Scott DeShane uh, co-writing it with a guy named Mike Benton, but it's all Jim Woodring art. And this is definitely more work for hire, obviously done for like the government or ecological uh, concern. But it's just getting this beautiful Jim Woodring cartooning, like very simple, very clean. I almost wish Jim Woodring, there was two of them. Like that would have been great if he could have just done kids comics. He's very good at it. So here we see Smokey writing this letter and delivering it through Blue Jay to a local school where the teacher could read it to the kids. And uh, Smokey once again is talking about oh, how only you can prevent forest fires. It's like a broken record, that guy. So we see these kids, they're really into nature. They're uh, in the forest bird watching. This car goes by and a guy throws a lit cigarette out the window. And the kids stomp it out. And they hear off camera, they hear, good job. And it's Smokey the Bear. And just Jim Woodring just draw, draws the foliage and the trees so beautifully. When you look like in the backgrounds here, He's so good at that. So Smokey starts uh, telling the kids all about trees. Kind of quizzing them too. When I was a little kid, I wanted to be Smokey the Bear. I thought it was a viable job option. When a... Uh, Adults would ask, what do you want to be when you grow up? I would say Smokey the Bear. And uh, I failed in my uh, dream. That's why I'm a bitter old man. And it could never be Smokey the Bear. But I still love the shit out of him. <laughs> he's so cute. I like how he's cute, but very macho, too. He's a combination of cute and macho. So they're just extolling the virtues of forests and how they help. They're great for everything. Talk about the all the in all the critters that depend on the forest. It's interesting though. I think this is a government organization because they constantly also say, "Yeah, and these trees can be chopped down and turned into paper, which is very useful." That's what this kid is saying. We need it for lumber. Instead of just saying, yeah, leave the trees alone. We can use hemp for paper or something else. Well, I guess hemp. But I like this, though. The the kid's showing all the various things that come from trees. And it says comic books. And it's Frank. He sneaks a little Frank in there. You can barely see it. It's very tiny. But I like that. He's a very handy fold-out uh, centerfold. The world of the forest. This had some interesting facts in it. I was like, I felt like a little kid. I was like, what? Get out of here. That's crazy. 
Like, I found out that crickets have ears on their front legs. And that one out of five little living things is a beetle. Isn't that crazy? That's nuts. Pill bugs are the only crustaceans that live on land, I found out. Catfish can live up to 60 years. Turtles, box turtles, can live for 100 years. It's nuts. And uh, I thought this was weird too. A bear cub at birth weighs 8 to 12 ounces. So bears are as small as we are when they're born. And then they grow into whatever, you know, huge, gigantic mammal. So I like this, just to, like the way a little kid would. I was kind of dumbfounded by some of these facts. I don't know, maybe they're not even true. Who knows? It does seem like this is well-researched, though. You know, it was uh, sent to schools and such, so... They talk about how to properly put out a fire and the harm that forest fires can cause. And then it seems like the guy who threw the cigarette butt, he also started a campfire and then took off before it was properly extinguished. This guy's a fucking villain, man. He's, he's like the Doctor Doom of this comic. So luckily... You know, the kids, of course, we can't put this out ourselves. They go find some forest rangers, which who knows how long that would take in real life. But they're right there, and they properly extinguish it with the help of Smokey the Bear. Well, they, here's the guy who started the fire. They caught him. You don't even see his face. He's so ashamed. So hopefully they're going to throw him in jail for a long time. And he'll be anally raped for his uh, karmic punishment. And they find a little bird nest. And they're like, look, Smokey, these, these birds would have been burned to death. And here's some advice for kids. See, so learn about forests and their management. It's not like, hey, stop chopping down trees. It's just like, oh, chop down trees, but then grow another one. Only you can prevent forest fires. That's my smoke imitation. See? I wasn't, I wasn't a good smoky. I couldn't grow up to be Smokey the Bear. Here's one green tree. This is a year later. This is 1998. Obviously another work for hire thing for some government organization. Pretty much the same thing. What a beautifully drawn tree, though. So simple. You know, it's a kid's comic. Which I'm wondering is so fucking good. And uh, we see these uh, kids, these cute kids. They're from all over the world. And they're in the forest. And they hear a voice saying, uh, you know a lot about trees. That's good. And this guy pops out from behind a tree. I don't know what the hell he's doing just lurking around the forest, this old guy. But it kind of looks like Jim Woodring is an old man. If you've ever seen pictures of Jim Woodring, he kind of is a very fuzzy guy. A little, you know, burly. And this looks like Jim Woodring with the snowy white hair. Which actually, now he might have. I haven't seen a picture of Jim Woodring recently, but I imagine he's gone gray. So he says, I'm Mr. Underwood. And I don't know if that's like a, you know, like, hey, it is Jim Woodring. You know, a little play on his name. And he's going to tell the kids, uh, you know, what uh, the importance of trees. He's going to show them how important trees are kind of weird though these little like teenage girls he draws really curvy like a uh, like pin up girl curvy so uh, they all stand in a circle and hold hands and they shrink down to the size of a bug so they can see all the life around them this Mr. Underwood whistles in some uh, 
some flying insects. I think they're beetles come to be their steeds. And they fly up to the canopy above the trees to see how the, uh, the processes work up there. Leaves turning sunlight into food, ingesting CO2 and emitting oxygen, all the different kinds of leaves. And then to go lower, he whistles again and the squirrel pops up and they all get on the squirrel's back. I kind of like that panel. And you learn more about trees. And then uh, Mr. Mole comes out of the ground and escorts them so they can uh, look at the roots and learn about the roots and how they work. And then for some reason, these ants show up with picnic baskets. <laughs> and they, they're bringing them their lunch. In, in the real world, uh, those ants would just make the kids lunch. They'd eat them. And you learn a lot about trees. I like his cutesy, uh, cartoony kid style, Jim Woodry. And yeah, we're just learning about trees here. With some nice cartooning. Kind of scary looking, this bird going after this flying bug. Trees can serve soil. I knew that. They uh, talk about global warming and how uh, trees are very important. So then uh, all of a sudden there's a zap or a zat sound and they're back to normal size. And they're like, hey, where did Mr. Underwood go? And as they're walking away, you look back at the tree. Ah, it's Mr. Underwood. He's got a tree face. <laughs> it's kind of weird and creepy. And silly. They have a couple of little quizzes kids can take. I'm supposed to pencil in the answers here. I thought this was a crazy fun fact about a tree. The 5,000 year old Montezuma Cypress in Mexico. It's 110 feet high, but 112 feet around the trunk. It's just this big stubby tree. I would love to see that. I always want to travel there. Check it out. And there's this like little poem about trees on the back and another nice Jim Woodring drawing. So I guess this was made by the National Association of Conservation Districts. Sounds like a nonprofit or something. So there you have it. Three obscure 90s Jim Woodring comics. A Jim Woodring triple feature. A trifecta. And, uh, just very odd, curious things. Um, the blue book I definitely recommend. You got to have this in your collection. This is just a wonderful, bizarre, nebulous story. And these are just kind of curiosities, which uh, I kind of like having just for the beautiful cartooning. So I hope you liked it. And I hope you can find I bet you can find these cheap. And uh, uh, hopefully I'll hear, see you here next time. Here at the Hercules Pettix Academy of Comic Book Studies.